Yeah, of course. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Solana Borzanko. I am a senior backend engineer. And yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit about mentorship in the community. Eldad? So, yes, Eld Grotenburg. Uh, I live in the uh, Netherlands, in Rotterdam. Uh, work at Motion 10 as a uh, technology lead, I think the uh, title is these days. <laughs> um, I'm also Azure MVP. And yes, we are going to talk about, today about mentorship, community, and all that kind of nice stuff. Yeah. So I think that we can start from uh, how it all started. Uh, if you remember, Eldad, how we met one day uh, when we had a nice community call. Um, I guess it was around Christmas time. And it was a Christmas party from Dylan BT. He organized just a call with some couple of drinks on a Zoom. And we joined this. I joined to meet some new people and have some friends around uh, during some holidays. Um, what was the reason for you to join there? Yeah, so I know Dylan, like I've been talking on several NDC conferences where Dylan always, of course, is involved. He does his whole sessions with, uh, so normally when we did this in person, like he would have his band there. These days he just like has a band of all the different Dylans, like there's six Dylans <laughs> on the but it's always nice to see. Yeah. Yes, it's just like uh, seeing Dylan again and of course seeing a lot of uh, old friends there and meeting new friends like I did with you. Yeah, I remember when we met uh, first time, we kept talking and we had, uh, we kind of became friends pretty fast. Uh, we had a couple of calls during the week after the party and we had a lot of things in common. I also remember that you were quite busy. You had like uh, several uh, several talks during the week and like conferences and it was like almost around the time when you were organizing your own conference. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so of course with everything virtual these days, so it's very easy to go to different conferences in different countries because I'm just sitting here in the same chair anyways, like uh, <laughs> with one mouse click I can go from Austria to New Zealand to Netherlands and back to uh, US. So um, yeah, basically I've been doing like three conferences every week. Um, so I've been, been quite busy with that. And like you said, I, I was also organizing Azure Lowlands, which was in January, so we, of course we were organizing that. Yeah, so we're talking about, a lot about, okay, so what does it mean to speak? Uh, what does uh, what does it involve, uh, like, prepare a session or write an abstract? And all those kind of things we were talking about, like, what does it actually involve to be a speaker? Yeah, I remember that I uh, never even thought about becoming a public speaker. I mean, of course, there's, like, many challenges, like, um, first of all, like, confidence, you know, you never know if you are in the right place and if you can actually talk about some topics. I also had some, like... As a female in tech, it was, well, I, I met quite a lot of different opinions uh, on that. So I was um, like, for me, being a public speaker, it was something like really impossible. Like, I would never do this. Like, no, it's not for me. But I remember when you were talking about your experience, I was just getting curious every day more and more. Like, it sounds like not just a lot of fun, but being a part of community and have a lot of awesome people around you and it's also a great thing to share your knowledge with other and I remember how I was started to ask you like hey but how you actually do like can you tell me a couple of words I was just like naturally curious and um, that was a point when I got this idea when this idea started like born in my head like maybe I should try it I remember your support from the beginning yeah, so I remember it'd be like, at some point you're like, so uh, if I would be like to become a speaker, like, what should I know? Like, uh, can you tell me a bit about this? Um, and so we basically start talking like, um, okay, so what does it involve actually to, how do you find a conference or something like that? Or um, uh, how do you know, like, what kind of uh, session could I submit? And so we basically just started talking about this kind of stuff where uh, I was talking, okay, so uh, what do I do when I start a new session or uh, when I start looking for a conference? And I think at this point, like, it was uh, implicit, but I think this is the point where, like, this mentorship we have uh, kind of started. Yeah, I remember that you uh, were kind of giving me some ideas, like, maybe you want to have a look at this one, maybe you want to try uh, to write some, like, articles or blog. Like, you were just throwing ideas into me just to see what I would like, and I really appreciate that you were not forcing anything on me, you were not trying to, like, tell me how I should do things, but you were just giving me a, a lot of space and opportunities just to try it out and see how I feel about things. Because I was also like, I had no idea where to even start. I had no idea even that there is a special place when you can like have your, all your sessions, like uh, sessionize, and then like you can submit on the conference. For me, everything was new. And the way how you can write an abstract, how you can find your conferences. 
Uh, it was really great to have all your wise advices on how to start, uh, where to look, how to prepare yourself. It was really great. Can you tell like how it was for you uh, to have me as a like new and experienced speaker? <laughs> Yeah, so for me, it was really about um, seeing through new eyes again. Like I've been speaking for a couple of years now. I think I've, uh, I've now been uh, MVP for, for, for almost five years or something like that. So I've been sp talking a bit before that. So I've been probably speaking for about seven years or something like that. Of course, when you have been speaking for seven years and uh, organizing my own conference for three years, um, you start looking at things differently than when you just started. So actually having to go back and look through a new person's eyes, you start thinking about, okay, so uh, what does this actually mean for a new person? How can I make sure that we are uh, inviting as a community? How do I make sure that people can find our conference, that they feel comfortable to actually submit to our conference? So you start to looking at things completely differently again, because uh, you are t telling me, of course, like, okay, I don't know where to get started. So I'm now thinking, okay, so, um, how can we actually uh, make sure that people know, okay, if I want to get started, I can just contact people, like I can just go and submit a session because most of the conference are actually looking for new speakers. Uh, but if you are like a new speaker and you don't know about this, like then you have that chicken and egg, like we want new speakers, but if new speakers don't know we want new speakers, then how do we find new speakers? Yeah, that's true, that's true. I remember that we were talking with you about some uh, cases like in my company or my previous company I was telling you some stories like hey I had this situation or these challenges and so on and I remember how you first told me like uh, try to write it down just try to make a short uh, like kind of a description of what you did and we can try to make a, an abstract out of it like if you have a story to share just try to do this I remember that was kind of a first step me uh, kind of getting into into like community and speaking and so on like just getting my self-prepared and um, I remember that I wrote a really brief um, like a, a brief uh, text like what actually I was doing in my company and I showed it to you and we kind of had a couple of uh, like just we discussed it briefly and you gave me a really good feedback how I can improve it make it shorter make it more clear and I'm also uh, what is what, what was really cool for me that you didn't edit it like you know you just gave me a couple of advices and you let me work on it a bit longer and I guess that was the time when we made the first abstract yes so I think that at this point we also like uh, like you said okay so uh, I can be your mentor if you want like I can actually help you more on this if you actually want to start speaking and get involved more with your community I think a very important point what you say here like if you want to become a mentor or if you want to basically take someone on your wing make sure you're not going to try to make a copy of yourself like yeah. let the person be themselves like just guide them um, show them like okay I can help you on uh, finding like what this session nice or I can help you like I can read your text I, what I didn't want to do is like okay you should put this in here and then submit to this and then you have to talk about this like yeah, yeah. you should find your own way basically and I should just be there to make that way a bit more paved for you that's true. I, I think that none of us had any idea of what does mentoring actually means uh, in terms of community. Like I used to mentor people before, but I was just like teaching them tech, like how to write things, how to write code and stuff like this. And when we started to talk about mentoring, I was like, I had so many doubts, like I had no idea what does it actually mean. But yeah, of course, let's try it. And I also remember that you sent me a couple of uh, conferences to submit to, like to just have a look if I want to, to speak there. And I also remember that uh, the first of them was Global Asia. And that's actually how we got an idea for this talk. Uh, when I submitted my conference, uh, my, my talk to a Global Asia conference, um, <clears throat> we had this um, body program from uh, Global Asia, when you kind of like officially my mentor. Uh, and that's what we, how we, when we started to think how we can actually share this experience, uh, like the mentoring program. Yes, so actually you mentioned the mentoring program from Global Asia, like the body program. And I think Annie and Rick uh, might want to join for this because they know also a lot about this. Where they are actually like, uh, where you, as Global Asia, they're actually saying, okay, if you want a body, uh, if you're a new speaker, uh, Global Asia wants to help this over there as well. So Annie, you can probably tell a bit more about this part. Yes, very happy. Um, I don't have any kind of detailed um, run through, but as you can see uh, from the screen, 
there's the link that you can find out more and, and dive deeper into the body program. But really what it is, as, as you mentioned, Elder, it's, it's a really great program from Global Azure um, to really help people find mentors and mentees and really get uh, the community even more uh, running better, smoother and, and making those connections there and to get that the power of mentorship. And I do have to say a little bit of a, a note. There is currently a lot of mentors signed up. So there's a lot of people interested in mentoring. But at the moment, uh, there is a need for mentees. So if you are interested in getting a mentor, now is actually the perfect time to sign up because there's so much uh, interest for um, for those particularly, particularly looking for mentees, which is usually, uh, it's usually the other way around in mentorship programs. So this is a rare chance to truly get uh, a really great mentor. Um, so highly recommend to check that out from that link there. Yes, so um, because like uh, we were telling, like we just basically we ran into each other, became friends, and then we come, became into this mentorship. But I can definitely uh, think like if you are just someone that's new out there and um, doesn't know about like haven't met anyone yet, like one thing I would definitely say, like I would say to anyone, uh, always try to go out to these social calls. Like we are all virtual, of course, so it's different than when we we're in person, when you could go to meetups and meet people there. But there's still a lot of social calls going on and virtual meetups as well. Like, just uh, and don't go there just to find a mentor or a mentee, but just to get to know people. I would say, because even if you're just like uh, getting involved with the community, like you will run into people that have are of the same mind um, and things like that. So, Elder, I mean, obviously the the, the Global Azure um, Buddy System is 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 our attempt to try and connect people who want support with with people who are more experienced you're a conference organizer so if you put that hat on for a moment do you think it's something that the conference organizers should think about more trying to encourage first-time speakers maybe trying to partner them up with more experienced ones give tips and, and help yes i definitely think that's something that we should look into more i think i know there's already a couple of uh conferences out there that actually do this like uh, when you uh, sign up, for example, by at Sessionize, where you can say, I would like to have a mentor or I want to become a mentor. Um, so there are already some conferences out there. I think we should actually do this more just to make sure that people that are new just have someone there, there with them that can just take them to the first steps. Um, and like I said, it's not about pushing someone somewhere, but by, by just guiding them. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're running into something, or if you just are like, I'm not sure if this is okay, can you have a look? Uh, that you know there's someone there that can actually help you with this. So I think definitely as event organizers, we should do this more um, on that. Yeah, so, definitely. You know, uh, sorry. I, I was just going to say, Elena, actually, <laughs> from your point of view, as a as a new speaker, um, would you think about submitting to an event even for the first time without much experience if you could see that that event had got the, you know, the sort of arm around the shoulder welcoming approach and they were going to help you? Definitely, you know, uh, when I was looking, like, I'm a, as a developer, I'm, I was always interested in the conferences, like to learn some new stuff and so on. And I also remember that I saw so many conferences, uh, like such a big conferences with many, many speakers. And uh, I never saw even the hint of like, that they are welcome like new people or so on. I'm pretty sure that like behind the scene, like in a community when people are know each other, that somehow they bring in new people. But from outside, for me has never been involved with anyone with from the community. Um, it was just unknown. Like if I would like if I would never meet Elder, uh, I'm I have no idea how would it happen, how I would get into a community. Like it was a great coincidence. Um, but from outside, I had no idea how to start. I had no idea how I can understand that I'm actually being welcome as a new speaker. And um, I was not sure if I can even ask, like, you know, uh, people are busy, people are organizing things and people are being speakers. And like, can I ask, like, would it be weird if I would just ask, like, if I can be a speaker there or if I would ask for help from someone? Uh, so, of course, when I see that conference I welcome new speakers and they offer kind of it shouldn't be help you know I, I don't expect anyone to take me for the hand and just lead me but kind of advices like have a look on this and uh, if you want to prepare your session and be interested for people there there is like a couple of tips and have a look on those videos like because people like it's really hard to there is a huge process of setting all those things up so it's really hard if you don't know anything about it to start being a great speaker or even a good speaker from like first time 
without anyone's advice so of course yes really truly yeah um uh question that that's popped into our heads is um do you think it's easier to to find mentors in a virtual world world or compared to like in-person events where you maybe have more um um networking things and whatnot available and maybe as a follow-up question uh to that is um do you think your mentorship uh will change when we get back to more of a physical uh, event world or will it stay kind of the same? Does the mentorship change as far as um, virtual versus uh, physical? Um, I will start from the second one because it's kind of a bit easier to answer. Uh, I think it's definitely going to change, at least for me. I mean, I think it's not like will be completely different. It will just transform in something else because this is different set of skills uh, when you speak on a stage. I'm pretty sure. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. Well, Elliot said it to me, so I believe him. And of course, this will be a, a different like format of talks and different experience. It's still going to be kind of the same. Uh, we, we also have a couple of talks together with Eldad. So I'm pretty sure besides like being a mentor, we also kind of um, having our own like talks together. We have to polish it. And in the online format, that's the one thing. We cannot sit together. We cannot just have a brainstorm. We cannot make a rehearsal in person. We have to do everything online. And sometimes it's kind of not, not really comfortable. I'm, I really like uh, seeing people in person because you kind of have more touching points, I guess. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be different. Maybe Elliot, you can also comment on it. Uh. Oh, uh, so on that point, yes, it will be different. Um, like there will still be mentorship going on, but it will be on different points. Like uh, when you are speaking in person, like the speaking itself, of course, is the same, but it's more about uh, now instead of sitting behind your camera, and you have to think about lighting or you have to think about the right microphone. Now you have to think about, okay, um, how do I actually present my on stage? Where like, um, I'm now standing somewhere, I should not be standing still, but I should also not be running around the podium. Like those kind of things, like uh, that will be like, you are lo looking for different things. Of course, Rick does it anyways. Like Rick will be always <laughs> it anyways, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and the first question which you were asking, like uh, what's the difference uh, between virtual and, and real world? Um, uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure because when I was in the on the personal co personal conferences, I, I never thought about of, like being a speaker. I felt pretty free like to go and talk to people and just to like you know make new contacts, make new friends. Um, that was always right for me. But I kind of have a feeling that uh, in person it would be much harder to have this mentoring program because virtually we can talk anytime like we spent a lot of hours just talking with elder about different things uh, we had a lot of calls before and i think that in person of course you can always like make a contact in person and then like keep keep uh, this communication in, in virtual world but in person it also could be hard a bit uh, because when you have a conference and there's like many people around, many things are happening, uh, you would not ask like, hey, can you mention me please? Like it would not be a case. So it, it does require some time to first of all, understand that, okay, it's kind of a clique, like, you know, the people wants to be friends, people wants to keep communicating uh, with each other. And only after this, the mentoring program might come or, or not. I don't know, it's, it's all depends. So. Yeah, it's my opinion, but Elder, what do you think? What was easier for you? Uh, so I think uh, getting uh, involved as a new speaker might be a bit easier because you're already going to the meetups and most of the meetups will say, okay, so if anyone wants to speak, uh, come to visit us uh, after the sessions. So I think as a new speaker, it might be a little bit more easier. On the other hand, to actually find someone that can actually like help you on this it would be a bit harder because like you said, it's not as easy to just go up to someone, hey, can you mentor me? Like, well, if you're a virtual world, you might just say like, uh, because you're virtual anyways, like you might just chat like, hey, um, I, I see you have been speaking like, I think the barrier is a bit lower to do it virtually, like you can do it on chat or something like that, which is a little bit lower barrier than actually having to talk to someone and asking this in person, I think. I think so I think there's like uh, upsides and downsides to both of them. Yeah, at that point, that was a great segue, actually. We, will, we want to give a quick shout out to Mirza, who's saying hi from Indonesia. Um, I'm, so, Eldon and Elena, you're in completely different countries, aren't you? So, I mean, this is a great example of how, how the virtual communities that we've had to build in the past 12 months are actually removing those geographical barriers and enabling this. And I know, um, Elder, how many countries have you done sessions in in the past 12 months that you couldn't possibly have done before? 
And so I cannot give you a number now, but I've done sessions like in Nigeria, in uh, I'm doing session also like in South Africa, this one like in Johannesburg at these sessions. I've done sessions in South America, I've done sessions in, in Indonesia, Singapore, like countries that you are... Uh, uh, I'm not saying you would never get there, but it's not like you go there like twice a year or three times a year just to give a, a session at the meetup. Uh, and now all of a sudden, like like that, uh, I might have had uh, weeks where I like four, like uh, even like next week, I have four different sessions uh, in four different countries. <laughs> um, it's not something that most people will do like when we do this in person, but now because everything is virtual, we can actually do this. Like you can just go to and just also talk like at small meetups and actually share knowledge there. Yeah. You know, I uh, I also can say something about this. Like uh, yesterday, I had my first talk, and because it's online format, uh, my many like many friends from Ukraine, even my parents were watching. <laughs> like I'm I'm pretty sure they had no idea what I was talking about, but many people had opportunity just to have a look, and uh, they gave me a lot of feedback afterwards. And if it, if that would be in person, it would be much harder. Like, of course, I will have got a feedback and maybe some opinions and just like I will have people which can be physically there. So definitely this having this uh, experience in online format, like first experience, uh, I consider it's a great plus because it was, first of all, easier because you're kind of in a comfortable environment. You're at home, uh, you have your place. Uh, and uh, you have people which are supporting you from all over the world and you know that they are watching and you kind of feel a bit more safe so yeah so can i just ask then elena as as a as a speaker who's used to bouncing around and falling off stages one of the things that i miss as a virtual presenter is i can't see the audience like you're all laughing at me now and i can see that that's that's fine um I always found that great when I was starting out because you could see faces smiling at you, giving you encouragement. What's it like as a first-time speaker when when you don't have that? How do you how do you um, how do you give yourself the confidence? How do you, you you work out how you think the session's going across? Or is that something Elder helped with? Yes, definitely. Uh, well, first of all, I love seeing people as well. So every time when I had like anything like some session talks or internally in my company you know or like previous company we also used to have some like internal meetups and stuff like this um i loved being around people because you can see a feedback immediate feedback you can see how they react on you if they can understand you or they're like already sleeping and want to go on lunch or something like this uh, of course online format is a bit challenging in this way because you have no idea how people can follow you and this was exactly uh, a moment and ended as a mentor helped me really a lot because besides giving a lot of tips how to be a good presenter in online format like not to wave your hands trying to control your voice and like trying to like talk slowly and stuff like this we also did a couple of rehearsals when he actually helped me to understand how people see me from the side um, and this is was this was really great help uh, in online format i guess would be much harder without this and do you think that the experience of doing online first has given you more confidence to then do the in-person at larger events later? Um, I think just because it's online uh, and you kind of in a comf comfortable environment and you don't, some people might have a fear of people of stage without even knowing about this. Like you've never been on a stage, you have no idea if you're afraid of this or not. So definitely if you never been on a stage, uh, and you don't know if you will be afraid or not, having online experience might be a great start because this is definitely, this is environment you are working on. You kind of, you have those screens, you have camera, you have mic. This is, is something you get used to. So first time, give it a try. And then if, if there is a recording, this is awesome because then later on you can have a look and also understand like um, if you like it, what you did. Um, and I consider it as an easier start, an uh, online format, because I have no idea how, how would be my experience on the stage. Maybe I will just start to freak out <laughs> and I'll be super nervous. So um, I also will need a couple of tips uh, from Elliot, I guess, how to not to run across the stage and not to fall down. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's a little bit easier. But of course, I will, I will be able to tell more after my first experience on the stage as well. So, as a sort of a follow-up to that, um, and I, I know Eldert and I have talked about this before. 
a few people have, have said to me, oh, well, you know, we, we like virtual because it means we can pre-record and we can make sure we do it right. Um, and several other people have said, actually, no, we hate pre-recording because there's all this pressure then of, of trying to make it perfect. And I spend more time recording my session than I would have done if I'd, if I'd just presented it. I'm interested in what the pair of you you think, whether you, which side of that line you, you sit on, particularly for you, Elena, obviously, as, as a as a, more of a newcomer, does that undue pressure, is, is that something that would put you off or, or um, do you prefer doing as live as it were? You know, um, preparing for Global Asia gave me a really good understanding of uh, what I want from my first experience. So we were talking with Eldad, like how it should be. And I said, like, I want to do everything, first of all, live. I don't want to make a recording because this is the real this is the real thing like i want to do demo live i want to do my like my talk in live and uh another thing is i wanted elder to be with me on this like first time and just like have this a uh, few seconds or few minutes interaction when we were being together on the screen because it's also gives this like um, I'm not talking completely to a screen only and to myself, basically to a camera. I also have a, a live person here next to me and it's made made it easier. So, of course, live and demo live and everything live was for me uh, like must have. I mean, it was my feeling that this would be a right thing to do. Yeah, so I can only agree, like, um, I have done a couple of recorded sessions. Uh, I don't really like it uh, because you just miss like <laughs> Uh, once you're actually on, st on stage live, uh, you're still having a feeling like I'm talking to people and I'm actually doing this. Whereas you're recording, you just know like, yes, I'm just recording this. Um, it, it will be played in two weeks or something like that. Um, I get why some of the conference want it because it makes it a bit easier for them to make sure that everything is going okay. But as a speaker, I don't like it that much. Um, one thing I do like what you said, like I don't feel the pressure anymore. Uh, I, the first time I did a recorded session, I did exactly what you said, like I re-recorded it for like eight times because at uh, minute uh, 25 I said um, one too, too many times, so I completely recorded it again. <laughs> so after the first time I decided I'm not going to do this anymore, I will just treat it as a live session, I will do one take um, and just put that in. Because otherwise you just keep uh, recording and keep editing and um, yeah, it will just be too much uh, difference. No, yes. uh, any maybe yeah, some no. as well. Yeah, I have the same exact experience. I had a, a pre-recorded session recently as well. Um, I we take it like eight times as well. I did it once in the evening and then once in the morning and once again during lunchtime. It was crazy. There was way too many takes about it. But I do agree with you though. At the same time. Uh, I organize a lot of virtual events as well. It's really nice as an event organizer to truly know what all of your speakers will be saying beforehand, because then you can plan every single second of the event very meticulously. So that side is very wonderful, but from a speaker side, it really leads to um, perfection, kind of, <laughs> at least trying to achieve perfection, but that's rarely um, the case. Yeah, you know, uh, also like, yesterday when i had talk like i lost my mouse at some point and i know like if that would be pre-recording like i would definitely try to take another take and, and make it perfect but i also received um, like comments that it was funny actually like i lost my mouse it was alive you know it was live it was uh, funny i everyone understood that okay i was a bit nervous but yeah, I was kind of like honest with everyone. Yeah, this is live demo. I lost my mouse now. And this is this is what I also like. When you see the people are making mistakes and they kind of they're not not getting nervous about this, they understand what they're doing. It's also a part of the experience, I, I think. Yes. I mean, so how, how do you how do you find that? I mean, it's great that the audience are chipping in and supporting you. But I mean, the one thing I really struggle with, I'm struggling with it now, there's like three chat channels going up either side of my screen as I'm trying to watch you talk to you. Um, how do you how do you find that and, 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 and deal with that, Elaine? Does that work for you? Is it, are you? Are you able to multitask? Um, I am. Well, you know, <laughs> yesterday, I don't even remember how my... Uh, how my talk started because I was pretty nervous and it was the first time so I did what I did I turned off like all my phones all my chats like I literally had only like writer where I was showing the code uh, the browser for, for like <clears throat> for the streaming and uh, my presentation 
uh, and, and that's all. And I tried to turn everything off because I knew as a first uh, experience, like all those things were gonna distract me. And uh, yeah, I, I really don't remember how the talk went like uh, completely because I was a bit like nervous. Uh, but now, like as we are talking, I do see like some like people, the chat is going on and so on. And it's getting easier. And I'm pretty sure that every time uh, it will be easier and easier. and maybe at some point I will be able to present and also respond in the meantime on the comments or stuff like this. But of course, for the first time, I do recommend to concentrate on the talk. And if it's possible to do as we did with Elliot, that he was supporting me in the, in the, like behind the scene, he was like trying to respond on the chat and he was trying to help me with other things, uh, that would really be a great start. It will make just easier and more confident. Like I know that someone is helping me so I can concentrate on the thing I'm doing. Yes, uh, we are running out of time, but it's been a super interesting uh, session. I uh, would have loved to continue a discussion. And I think we can continue a discussion, for example, in Twitter or anywhere else after this. So yes. very interesting. Thank you so much, Elder and Elena. Thanks for Thank having us. <laughs>